Now in this experiment, what we are going to do is we are going to estimate the vitamin C content of orange juice or any fruit uh, juice, uh, maybe vegetable as well. Uh, we are going to estimate how much of vitamin C is present in, that, in a particular juice. What's the concentration? So the independent here we are. The aim of the experiment is to estimate the concentration of vitamin C in an extract okay, now the first thing we will need to look at we will we'll take it in different steps each component with a different step the first step would be is to prepare an extract now while preparing an extract what we'll have to do is we'll have to standardize a particular part of the fruit or vegetable whatever in the procedure of extracting this so what we'll do is first of all you should peel the vegetables or fruit and then weigh a specific mass of the fruit or vegetable now once we've done this, what we'll do is we'll take this into a food blender and add a specific volume of distilled water. So both these are taken and they are blended in the food blender for 5 minutes at low speed. Following that once we we get a pulp from this once the the effect of blending will give you either pulp or juice depending on how much water you're going to add into it and then what you do is you take this and you filter this now once this is filtered what you will get is filtered for a specific period of time maybe um, till no more juice drips out maybe excess or, or maybe for 10 minutes but somehow standardize this and what you will get is once you finish this you will get something called the residue which has no use for this experiment, no further use, so we can just forget about that and we'll be left with the filtrate and this filtrate contains the vitamin C which we will be using for the rest of the experiment so this is something that we'll be using for the remaining part of the experiment so that's step one. So, so the first step is how to prepare an extract. And if you see, uh, during this, we we've standardized or we've controlled certain variables. For example, we've taken a specific mass of the tissue. We've taken a specific volume, 
Um, we've also blended both of these for a specific period of time. Even the speed is mentioned. You filter for a specific period of time uh, variable. You can you can try this out to find a suitable time. Maybe after one or two trials, you'll know how long it actually takes. Uh, Ten minutes is just a guess, uh, but with practice, you'll learn how much time to keep that for. It will depend on uh, how much pulp is, how much uh, resin, uh, plant tissue there is, or, and how much water you add. So it depend upon those factors. Uh, now, once we've got the extract, uh, we must remember if we are comparing uh, different fruits, uh, the, the procedure for preparing the extract for each type of fruit should be uh, more or less, uh, less the same so that we get valid results, so that the results are more or less the same. Yeah, now, once we've done this, the second step would be to prepare vitamin C solution of a known concentration how do we do this? But what we need to do is first of all use a sensitive weighing balance you accurately weigh a specific mass of vitamin C uh, let's say let's say we take um, 10, 10 milligrams and this 10 milligrams of vitamin C uh, after accurately weighing it using a balance uh, and a weighing board what we can do is we can transfer this into a volumetric flask so transfer the vitamin C powder into a volumetric flask and then you add distilled water into the flask volumetric flask is it has a specific volume in this in this case let's take a volume of 100 centimeter cube it can be anything you can have a choice of flasks uh, there's different ranges uh, but in this case we we choose to use a 100 centimeter cube flask and what we'll do is for this flask um, something like this the volumetric flask and it's got a mark over here that mark tells you the volume so that is exactly 100 centimeter cube now what you do is first you add the vitamin C powder into this accurately measured everything is put in and then after you've transferred all the powder in you may um, think about how it could be done accurately and then you add the distilled water so first you add the vitamin C powder accurately weighed and then you add distilled water till the volume reaches 100 centimeter cube then you put the cover the stopper onto this flask and then you shake it gently till all the vitamin C dissolves into this so there shouldn't be any vitamin C at the bottom there shouldn't be a residue left there or a precipitate or whatever now that gives you a vitamin C solution of a known concentration and the concentration is equal to the mass of vitamin C 
divided by the volume of the solution that you have prepared. It will be slightly less than the volume of water which you are adding. And that mass of vitamin C will be, in this case, 10 milligrams. The volume is of the solution is 100 centimeter cube and hence you will have a solution which would now have if you divide both of these you would have a solution which is 10 divided by 100 that would give you a concentration of just something around 0 0.1 milligrams per centimeter cube or centimeter cube inverse so now we've, we've done the basic uh, steps for this experiment that is the first one is prepare and extract uh, of the fruit or vegetable which you want to find or estimate the vitamin C content of and number two is you want to prepare uh, a vitamin C solution which you will use for titration to estimate the unknown. Uh, we'll see how that works out in, in the remaining uh, step of this experiment. Now the third step is step 3 is titration of the vitamin C solution. Now what we do during this procedure is we as to make the procedure more accurate what we do is we first of all wash the burette so this is the burette is washed with the vitamin C solution to make sure that there is no residues and then we fill this with vitamin C. Now once we have filled this with vitamin C we will now once this is filled with vitamin C we'll now have to note the level of liquid here. Let's say this is X. Then in a conical flask we take some D C P I P solution and the color of this solution is the color which you see it's blue dark blue um, and we have to take a specific volume so let's take five centimeter cube of DCPIP which can accurately be measured by using a pipette so you pipette out five centimeter cube of DCPIP into this conical flask and the concentration of DCPIP should also be constant for every trial that you work out. So here this is 1% concentration. Now these are factors which need to be controlled for you to get valid, for you to get reliable results. Then what we do is we slowly let the burette, um, the liquid from the burette flow into the DCPIP solution until you get something like this. 
Now, what you observe, what you can see here is that this liquid level has gone down as as you're titrating this the liquid level has gone down from x to liquid level y and you note that change in the liquid level that change in liquid level will label as say from x to y we could label that as v a volume of the vitamin C solution needed to decolorize the DCPIP if, if you observe very keenly you can see the DCPIP has lost its blue color there's a slightly orange tinge because the vitamin C uh, solution may have had a slightly orange tinge in it uh, but when the blue color disappears uh, you could then stop the titration and accurately uh, measure the change in the level of the liquid. So that is VA. So from this experiment what we get is for this titration VA is the volume of vitamin C solution used to be colorize the DC PIP and make a note of this. This will be later needed for you to calculate the vitamin C concentration, the unknown solution. So that is step three. It's now complete. Now in step four, what we need to do is we now titrate the extract. or in some cases it may be you want to test fruit uh, juice from a packet from a ready-made packet or from a bottle or whatever uh, whatever uh, source you want to test the vitamin C in uh, you could fill the burette with that so the the fourth step is titrate the extract against the same volume and same concentration of DCPIP so you again the DC PIP solution should have the same concentration and the same volume 5 centimeter cube 1 percent concentration now this should be a fixed value every time you repeat this experiment these values should be constant now the next thing you do is you open the tap and titrate this and again you note the change in liquid level from the start to the end so whatever it is and you label this as V B where V B is the volume of fruit juice that decolorizes DCPIP. And you can see the color of DCPIP is has changed and it's been it will become colorless. Now the, the next step is just let's uh, for your information uh, just let's see why the DCPIP 
change this color just for your information so DCP IP changes color why that's what um, some of you would like to know and I think it's important that you know this now the DCP IP is something called so DC PIP is di chloro phenol Indo phenol. and when it's it's a blue pigment when it is or a blue solution when it is oxidized so when it's oxidized it's blue and when it reacts with vitamin C what vitamin C does is it reduces the DCPIP and reduced DCPIP is colorless now the, the chemistry we use here or the technique we are using here is we are seeing how much of vitamin C it takes to neutralize to change the color or to uh, reduce the DCPIP if there's more vitamin C in the solution it would take or the concentration of vitamin C is high it would take less of the juice to decolorize the DCPIP so, so there's an inverse proportion. We'll see that in the next equation as we go ahead. Finally, uh, we come to step number six, the last step of the experiment. is calculation of the vitamin C concentration now we we'll use the values which we have obtained from this experiment to calculate the vitamin C concentration in the solution uh, the equation we would use is CV that's the concentration of vitamin C in the unknown um, solution or the unknown concentration is equal to VACA VA C A that would be Shakira's World Cup song Waka 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 over V B where V A is volume of the vitamin C solution that was used to decolorize the DCPIP CA was the concentration of that solution and VB is the volume of extract that decolorizes DCPIP and that would give you the concentration of vitamin C in the solution or in the extract so CB is concentration of vitamin C 
in the extract and and that's how you would actually calculate the vitamin C solution the concentration in a solution what are the other factors that could influence the concentration of vitamin C um, we'll, we'll discuss about that in the next section yeah, the last thing we would discuss about for this core practical is uh, the factors that we need to control in this experiment one is we could control the genetic variation in different fruits so by either obtaining fruits from the same plant or we could if we could make a stock solution we could use that for many trials uh, secondly uh, the storage conditions could also influence the vitamin C concentration high temperature um, could also influence this the growth conditions its environmental conditions during growth for example the amount of nutrients they receive the minerals provided um, the temperature the amount of water available uh, these are also factors that could influence the vitamin C concentration and any of these could actually be used as an independent variable uh, or if it's not an independent variable it has to be a controlled variable something which you need to keep constant to ensure that you can compare make, make valid comparisons between different fruits or different vegetables or whatever is being compared um, so um, wish you all the best for your preparation for the exams uh, hope this helps and uh, look out for a few more videos thank you
violence and double power. It's just the only, only trouble.